So we're down here at Fishable Houchins, which is, or might be Hoochins, I don't know how Tony pronounces that, but we're out here in the beautiful Essex countryside, middle of nowhere, and we've got a really, really nice irrigation reservoir behind us, which is proper, mature, and beautiful looking in this spring weather we've got. So Joe gets loads of messages from you guys, um, loads of support for the channel and all the great work he's doing, but some of the questions that he gets, um, relate to us going us going on to lakes that maybe people don't have all access to um, and doing our own sort of fishing and we wanted to mix in a bit of the everyman style of fishing so we're at a day ticket lake today which is bookable and fishable by anyone okay but over and above that we've never been here before i think joe might have come here when he was 12 or something i've never seen the place we're going in totally cold well, it's about seven degrees today, but it is a bit chilly, but we're going in cold. I've never seen the place and we're just going to fish a day session, see how we get on. The fish in here are stunning. Lots of doubles and twenties, really, really nice, Nick. There's a few old ones mixed in there and we're just going to look at how Joe and I might try and get a bite in what is ostensibly just a day session. We're probably not going to do the night and um, yeah, totally cold. No idea what's going to happen. But I'm going to get the gear out, get loaded up, and there's a swim up there I've got my eye on. So I'm going to get down there in a minute. So there you go, I had my van nicely racked out a few weeks ago. Put up a, a mate of mine done it, Richard Hopkins. Does, does brilliant, um, brilliant craftsmanship. He's built a thing in my garden and all that. Anyway, he's done this racking for me. Put up a post about it, right, thinking, <clears throat> I'll put it up, show you guys, give Richard a bit of a push because he's a great chippy. And... Um, you know, didn't expect anything. Gone like to like 3,000 likes, you guys went crazy. But then the next day I put up a post of the best carp I ever caught, 500 likes. You guys are absolutely mental. <laughs> Come on, baby. Feels like I've got a puncher. So how do I get that up the steps then? <laughs> Ah! 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 <laughs> Steeper than it looks. Uh. Ah. We will not surrender. <laughs> ah. Maybe not film this bit. Eh? <laughs> Tony would be like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> There you go. Don't be Joe Wicks for the day. <laughs> now, need to run up these steps like Rocky. Adrian! Look out, Pennin's gone for Pennin's post. <sighs> I suppose it's rude not to start in this swim, mate, isn't it? Can we bring in the makeup team? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, unbelievable. I uh, just, yeah, flattered and humbled that uh, Tony's dropped in a swim named after me. Obviously, not much gets caught out of here, but I'm just going to fish in here today. Apparently, the fish were rolling out there, but you know what? I'm going to come in here anyway because how often do you get to? fish a swim with your name on it so <laughs> we're going to give it a go I mean if I catch a carp out of here today then that would just be that would be a bit special so I want to get some uh, I've got enough gear for a week it feels like I'm not really ready for a day session but what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the fish um, they're obviously in this area so I'm just going to feed them some bait I'm in no rush whatsoever to get fishing at all it's just the application of what I call free safe food and you can do it over, I mean we do it when we go to France and not fish for three days sometimes. Do it on busy day tickets sometimes if you've got a free night or might not fish for the first 24 hours. It's a devastating tactic because people never pre-bait a swim and you can actually do it on a smaller session as a day session just by drip feeding bait into the swim over the course of a few hours. So 
because I've got to re-tackle all my rods, it's fitting in quite nicely with today. So I'm just going to pull a few baits where we've seen the bubbles, sort out some gear, pull a few baits, put the kettle on, pull a few baits, that sort of drill. I guess it's a bit like you know, floater fishing, isn't it? You wouldn't just cast out a single floater. Exactly. Floater fishing is the best analogy for free safe food because if you, if you see them on the surface and then you put out a bait and you hook one, They'll, you know, they'll all go. A lot of people go, well, like I used to, you go, oh, well, I've caught one. But actually, if you get them feeding and competing, you know what it's like better than anyone, Joe. When you hook one on a floater and you've got it going properly, while you're playing them, the others are still feeding, aren't they? So you get them in the net, put out a few more, and you get another one. So rather than just trying to catch one fish today, I'm going to go and see if I can catch two or three in the back end of the day after feeding them with a bit of bait to get them interested with no lines in the water. That's the plan anyway. Getting all naked, are we? Yeah, mate. I mean, <laughs> when um, when there's a leader ban, it tends to be, it tends to result in people fishing leg clips and tubing, um, which kind of limits your rigs a little bit. It means you can't really use short, stiff rigs or anything like that. So, so yeah, I'm, I've just got um, a fluorocarbon mainline. I've dotted a bit of putty up there behind the lead, going back five or so feet. And then down this end, I've just got a little heli sleeve. I really like these ones because the swivel just drops straight down onto the hard bit without jamming, so you're pl not playing it on the line. Two ounce lead uh, and a top bead. So I'm not sure what I'm going to put on these yet, but some, some sort of uh, little fl fluorocarbon link with a bottom bait um, is what I'm going to go for. But like I say, I'm in no rush. There's a little bit of fizzing out to the right. What, what you're trying to, what, what I would never do if I was doing this sort of fishing, I would never just fire bait on a lake that I didn't know what was on the bottom. But it's very early in the year. Um, this lake is blue dyed, and, and Tony, the owner, has told us there isn't any weed down there. So if you're going to do anything like this, never go into a swim and, and put some bait, think, oh, I'll try a bit there, try, you know, and then you cast out and it's solid with weed. It'd be the most brain dead idiot thing to do in the world. So. Um, I've only done it here without putting a lead in first because I know the bottom is pretty flat and pretty clean. So as long as I feel for a drop where I put bait, then I'm happy. I can see a load of bubbles through the bushes where I've been firing bait. I can't believe they're eating it that quick. Uh, it's not supposed to be that easy on here, but it looks quite positive. Um, but I'm not in any rush to get fishing at all, like we said. Um, probably won't fish this side of lunchtime even. Joe's thinking, oh, we've only got a day. <laughs> but, um, you know, the longer, like, like we were saying earlier, the, the, the more fish that you can get confidently in an area. The way I see it is that on any busy lake, once you're in a swim, that is your own private bit of, bit of real estate. You can do what you want with it. And what I've done with it right now is I've taped it off and put up some no fishing signs and I'm just catapulting a bit of bait out. And when you think of it like that, if, if, if for me, if there's fish in the area and I'm trickling in bait, then I'm fishing. I haven't got to have hooks out to do it. I'm, I'm investing in a bigger picture. This could all bite me in the arse, you know, but it does generally work really, really well. And done it at places like St. John's at Linear. Now you imagine St. John's like the busiest day ticket circuit in the world. And that would never ever get pre-baited. But once you're in your swim, you shut it, tape it off, <laughs> metaphorically, and just start giving them a bit of food and just changes the game massively. You've probably done it a little bit here and there, haven't you, Joe, down the, down the line? Oh, definitely, mate, yeah, I, I kind of, you know, I do more short-term pre-baiting than I do long-term pre-baiting, really. Right, you right. Know, like during the session, wondering yeah. about what, like putting a little bit in and here and there, yeah. 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 A bit like um, match anglers when they're feeding and baiting a spot and they bait the inside line for later. I've seen you do a lot of that. That's quite a big thing to do, isn't it? That a lot of people don't do. Definitely, yeah. I like, you know, it's obviously 
when you've got that clear water and you can trickle a little bit into spots where you can see and it just lets you know if they're in that area as well, yeah, doesn't it really? Definitely. And I think another big part of that is most carp anglers out there seem to equate more bait with more fish, but you and I actually we do reasonably all right for ourselves and we don't tend to use loads, do we? No, I mean like you say, we both get you know, we're lucky enough to get bait for free and we're not the sort of people who just chuck it in for the sake of it, are we? No. Know? No, definitely or not. Fill it in when we leave, you know, and no. stitch everyone else up. No, no, definitely not. Just, just enough for a bite is pretty much how we do it, isn't it? This looks good. Tidy. I'll get the kettle on soon, mate. Right, so are we now like quarter to 11 or something? Still no rods in the water. No, I've only tied one rig as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just been uh, dripping it in in the zones that we, that we want to fish and actually the fish that we've seen, very, very few because it's a bit murky, but there are fish in the area coming through. There's also a bit going on here that you spotted, Joe, when you've done a lap and they're just drifting in here a little bit. They're out there on the surface, which isn't ideal bloody cold I'm surprised they are on the surface but there's a bit just sort of down the shelf off this pipe so I'm just going to put a couple of handfuls down there as a backup I even put a rod on a single stick up here on its own there's no snags or weed or anything I'm just going to put a bit down here as backup now obviously you know this kind of weather with these kind of conditions and the fish doing what they're doing most anglers port a call would be a zig rig but you're not a fan of zig rigs, are you, Adam? Only because I'm crap at zig fishing. <laughs> Every year, really, really good anglers who are good at zigs, basically you, tell me I should do it more, and I'll need it in my locker, but it just isn't. There was a guy on uh, Instagram the other day that uh, he come up on my feed and he said he had uh, foul looked four and caught one. Um, it was holding a nice scaly 22 pounder or something like that. And I was like, man, I said, so basically you foul looked five, but one of them was foul looked in the mouth. <laughs> I mean, I won't lie to you, you know, since that session in the winter when we were out and I managed to foul look two, you know, that, that did put me off them a bit. Um, but ultimately, you know, I've caught so many fish in them over the years and, and bonus fish as well that I really don't think I would have caught otherwise mm, that mm, mm. Oh, still something that I can't get out, you know, delete from my armory. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's definitely a, a massive, when I asked you about it before, you know, the numbers that you had foul hooked were tiny compared to the conversion. So it's obviously worked for you, but I think one of the reasons that it's worked for you is that you do tend to fish, really, you like a short zig. So they're obviously dropping, whereas I think a lot of the time people aren't fishing them with necessarily the intelligence that you do and they're too high and the fish are below them, they swim through them and it drapes over a peck, fish carries on going and that's it. And that's certainly something that's happened to me in the past where I've just fished it like an idiot or just guessed it wrong. And um, But also, you know, like that fish, you're not going to catch that fish, are you? You know, nobody's going to catch that fish that, that session. Mm. Um, so you're kind of spoiling chances for you. And if that's, that's one of them really special ones, yeah, then, you know... It's, it's out of the game. It's a painful process. Very, very. It's... Uh, As Elliot Gray knows. <laughs> Does he? I don't know. <laughs> Foul looking big ones is not much fun. It's, it's happened to me and yeah, no, it's horrible. So if it means less bites, but catching them on the bottom or on a floater, then then I'll do that instead. But uh, got someone left their floater right at home. Yeah, I did, yeah, really bad angling. So we're gonna put a three ounce lead down there in the depths. <laughs> Adam said it's not going to rain for a million years, and now it's trickling with rain. And I haven't got a brolly in my bed's out, no! Never tempt fate, the universe is always listening. Yeah, she is, but she's not going to soak me. So, rod ready to go? Got rod ready to go, mate. Um, 
this is going just along the margin it's just a little fluorocarbonate link and a bottom bait on a naked helicopter setup um, I've been putting some baits down that right hand margin and the ducks have been diving on them quite a lot and um, just had someone set up just next to the spot literally with a bivy mallet <laughs> so maybe we can prove that carp like mallets and catch a, a fish on this rod but um, anyway it's time we got fishing there's a few bubbles and that coming up across the swim there are fish traveling through the area so I'm going to get this one in down that margin I'm going to put the other one down to the left and um, see if we can get something to happen all right yep I'm not That fish that just rolled behind it. Yeah. It's very, very busy. Um, not on a carp lake that we're on, but five yards behind us the catfishing lake has got an exclusive booking and there's a lot of friendly disturbance so I'm going to put a rod right up out the way for everybody um, it's in the it's a spot we put a bit of bait earlier off this pipe where we'd seen a little bit of activity um, it's the backup plan Very gentle, mate. Yeah. And in silent, like a bait boat. Rock hard down there, deep as well. Really nice spot. Well, that weren't out actually very long. What was that in there? 40 minutes? didn't expect it to happen to be honest because we've been uh that's all right it's not going to kite in there now we've been um watching the fish haven't we joe out in the middle crashing and boiling and rolling and um and i was thinking oh my god maybe we do need a zig out there but we were getting the odd little knock on the on the alarms and which sort of I've got very slack fluoro running up the shelf, but those little knocks, you know, they could only be carp coming through and we've had it on all three rods, so clearly they were coming through. And that little bit of uh, free safe food that was down there for such a long time has obviously been getting visited. Just trying to side strain him away out of this snag. It's not a very big fish, but he's very, very fast moving and lively. I am... Uh, a died in the wall clutch man but with thick fluorocarbon twist is your worst enemy and i do i like a backwind with uh, fluoro on what's your i know you're a fluoro man what's your uh, choice joe 100 percent backwind yeah for that reason uh, or would you do it anyway line twist and just more control in my opinion uh, and also old dog new tricks <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, top new tricks. <laughs> All right, come on, mate. That's it. Upper double, mid to upper double. Jubbly jubbly. First thing I'm going to do is put some bait back on the spot. Get one in the net, ping out a few baits and hopefully keep his mates interested for as long as we can. There's quite a lot of fizz in that area. I don't know, actually, it looks like ripped up weed. Maybe he did go through it. Maybe I am in a little bit of a weed. I've got a good drop, but Looks like there's a load of ripped up weed on the surface.
Well, there you go. Um, four hours of no fishing, <laughs> probably more than that. Uh, 40 minutes in the water, so it's not the hardest of lakes, so I shouldn't big it up or anything, but you know, free safe food. Sometimes it's better not just to be in a rush. If you're in a swim and you're applying bait, you're fishing, don't need hooks out. And this fish is a bit bigger than I thought, it's probably close to 20 pound. Um, he's got a lovely fat belly and he's, it's one of them ones that just feels like he's made of lead. So he's got a stock pond mouth, a couple of scars from the snags, really happy with him. Welcome to Hoochins. out there. Seems to like this zone, don't they? They do, yeah. They may well have been left alone in this zone for quite, you know, for the last few days, because even though the lake's been busy and it's done some fish, by all accounts, the person who was in here was fishing all the way across to that margin. So they may have been out sat, you know, used this area completely unmolested. I bet if you could speak to them, I bet you'd say, yeah, there's quite a lot of liners. Do you reckon a bit of lunch? Yeah, I am starving. I haven't even had any breakfast. So yeah, a bit of lunch and um, yeah, see look, this weed is ripping, is drifting through here just off this rod tip. Now there's only 20 yards of water it could come from, so it's down here. Yeah, a bit of lunch and um, let's hope the carp are gonna have a bit of lunch in a way. So this is the rig that, um, that I'm using today and it's a rig that I've used an awful lot over the last 12 years I suppose now, which is it's basically what I call the bottom bait chod rig. It's what it came from. It's, it's four, four inches of semi-stiff fluorocarbon. I've got a prototype size six hook on there with a straight eye, a generous size D on the back and a little ring swivel for attaching the bait which is always a bottom bait. Don't, don't think about wafters or, or anything like that, slow sinkers, just put a straight bottom bait on it. Works so, so well. Like a big D, because it gives it loads of separation. Joe's a big fan of fishing hairless and it achieves the same thing when you pick it up. It brings the hook up by the eye, which drops that point down. We've got a little smidge of putty halfway down. At the other end, I've got a nice big figure of eight loop knot to a ring swivel. Now we always use this rig on a rotary system or a helicopter rig. And the reason for that is because short, stiff rigs just don't sit well on any other type of lead arrangement. They're awful within lines and they don't look very attractive on lead clips either. But on a helicopter rig, you can be sure that pretty much whatever you're cast on, the lead will go in first or onto the bottom and the rig will just sit out nice and straight and flat behind the lead. So that's what I've got on there. Now a key thing with this is that I've tied that hook on with a whipping knot. If you tie it, I mean, you can see that the angle there between the point of the hook, this is the area of interest, between the point of the hook and the eye of the hook, you've got a nice big open throat to the hook or gape. And that is obviously the area that we need to be as open as possible to hook the carp. If I had tied that with a knotless knot, it would be exiting like that and it would just sit awful. With a whipping knot, it just flows straight out like that. You get a very, very tidy, compact knot, which unlike a knotless knot, grips onto the hook and stays tight and solid. No matter how much you pull the hook link, it, it doesn't contract and flex, which uh, a knotless knot does. Now, if you repeatedly stretch and contract a knotless knot, they can lose strength over the eye and over the eye formation, which is that sharp bit in the edge that you get on some hooks. So a whipping knot prevents that happening completely. I steam it so that the, the hook and the loop lay flat. And you should always know when your rig's bang on because when you lay it down on your table or on your leg, 
whichever way you lay it, the hook should always lay completely flat. That's really, really important. And it's another element that you just don't get with a knotless knot because when you tie a knotless knot with a stiff mono, it comes round the hook, then through the eye. And that means that it's gone through the eye the way it's come round, which means it's kicking off. With a whipping knot, when you tie the whipping knot, it comes straight out, barrels out the bottom of the knot, which means you get that perfect flat um, formation there. And the last thing I'll do is I'll just run it over my thumb just to kick it a little bit. It's what I call a sort of lamp post effect, just to give it a little curve in the end, put the putty back in place. And that is a very, very effective rig for, mostly for boily fishing. I don't tend to use it for particles probably would work great I've used it with tigers actually but for boily fishing it's absolutely phenomenal never ever tangles and yeah the fish seem to find it very difficult to deal with it's caught some of the biggest carp that I've ever caught works really well and it's worked today well it's gone a little bit quiet mate isn't it yeah it has mate um I feel, yeah, I feel we were quite lucky to uh, to get one. Really, I think better preparation. I mean, there was bites to be had out, had out there by a good zig angler. If you had been fishing, um, and I should have bought me me surface gear, but um, that's where they are. They're out in that middle area, aren't they? Just under the surface. Um, but yeah, we've caught. We've only fished for a few hours, and it was a lovely mirror. So. Good result, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's that's all we sort of come for, a little short session and uh, see, you know, how you'd go about it. I mean, obviously, it's always nice to know, now you've been here once, you know, what, how do you think you'd tackle it if you were to come here again? And um, it was this morning, knowing what you know now. Yeah, good question. I mean, the fish, I mean, they, another one just showed not far off that other rod while we were talking and... Um, I would fish it exactly the same, but I'd, I'd bring floaters in reserve because even though today's been quite cold, they have been near the surface. So I, I, I think probably even if the weather was quite bad, you could probably tempt a chance off the top. But um, I would be, I'd be quite happy persevering with the boily fishing. I think, you know, certainly if I was doing a 24 hour period and overnight, you know, I think I'd feed just for the day and then put the rods out in the evening for the night and, and, and so on. And I think, I'd, yeah, I'd be very happy with that, but I certainly would bring the floater rod. And um, it's just that normally I always have that in a van, always. It's like my golden rule from 1st of March to the 30th of November, that's always there. But where I'm fishing at the moment is like proper snaggy, as you know. So it's not been in my kit because I, I couldn't risk hooking one on it. So, yeah, I, that would have been a chance or two today. But, um, you know, it's um, Essex hasn't got loads of really great, day ticket waters and we you know it's, it's right in our jurisdiction so to speak but you know we didn't really know about it. it was off the radar and people are always asking about lakes and also how you would approach so we've shown an approach that has yielded a, a really nice fish and the lake you know the, well, there's two lakes here actually there's obviously the catfish lake there which has got fish well over 100 pound which is mind-blowing and then this carp lake at, at Houchins which um is, is from the pictures we've seen and from the fish we caught is just, you know, they're lovely conditioned carp, loads of 20s up to just over 30 pound, I think. Brilliant potential. I certainly fancy coming back here for a winter session. I think it'd be a good place for a snow carp. Maybe even a bit of floater fishing. Yeah, absolutely. A float. I think it's got loads of potential. The fish are lovely and you can either book the lake as an exclusive, you know, you probably get lots of people ask you about what, where can you book places, so Houchins, is is a lake you can book exclusively it's becoming quite a popular thing these days isn't it there's lots of lakes very doing that so. and the ones that are doing that are you know very booked up for they you know, are, like a yeah. year in advance or something yeah but so yeah a nice place to come with a few friends and not too many swims each swim's got plenty of water hasn't it yeah i think you'd want to come here maybe four of you or something like that yeah and i think again you know if you were to apply the tactic that you've applied when you've got three or four other anglers on here um, you know, you could go around and have a little social with them whilst you've pre baited While you're swim. priming, yeah. They're making all the, you know, um, spot in yeah. and pushing every, all the fish into your corner. And, yeah. yeah. I think, uh, yeah, it's that, it's that sort of lake where it could work well. You've got a big head of fish and, you know, there is going to be a reaction to disturbance. And, um, 
Yeah, so I mean, it's nice just to do simple, basic, straightforward fishing, boily on the bottom, and, and it's worked. And yeah, I look forward to coming back and having another go. I mean, very nice for Tony to accommodate us today. Houchins in, yeah, so geographically, guys, if you want to know, we're, we're sort of near Colchester, aren't we, Joan? That's it, yeah, and they've got a Facebook page which has got all the info and that on it. But um, yeah, like you said, if you're into a, a big fat pussy, <laughs> and uh, we've got plenty of them in the water next door. There are, absolutely. There's some monsters over there. And there's some carp in there as well. So lots going on. And we'll definitely be coming back, won't we, mate? 100%. But in the meantime, we've both got an itch to get on our little target waters at the moment. Um, I'm going to head off to Longreach. And Adam's off to the carp reserve. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I think... We've, we've probably timed it really badly because it's like five o'clock now and uh, I'm going to be sitting <laughs> in traffic for hours. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, I didn't think of that. Buzzing for it, to be honest with you, as I know you are too. So Absolutely. I'll let you get your rods in and uh, let's call it a day. Lovely day, thanks, Joe. Cheers yeah. for having me, mate. We'll catch up again soon. Definitely. Tap of the morning. Well... It's an absolutely stunning spring morning on Longreach. There's been mist rolling across the lake. There's a tiny little crescent moon rising. Um, yeah, really, really nice, picturesque scenery. And uh, I'd like to say I've got a carp in the sling, but I haven't. I got here last night and didn't get set up until well after dark. Um, spent a couple of hours looking, didn't really see anything, so I kind of just had to fall back onto information from the past, you know. Um, and I remember this time last year, I found them on the back of the wind, um, in the sunshine, in this corner. So, as it's going to be sunny today and there's a cold northeasterly breeze blowing, I thought they might end up showing up here. Um, but also I had a couple of fish at night here last year, so I thought, well, you know, it's, it's a good area, it's, it's worth a go. Um, so, yeah, I didn't have anything last night, and I haven't seen anything this morning within this vicinity. I did see one big fish show, um, but it was well up the boy line, and there was one that came out twice last night as well, which sounds massive, well up the boy line. Um, they do tend to just hang out that area most of the time, which is really frustrating because we can't get anywhere near them. And obviously on a big lake, when you've got a big out of bounds area, you know, the lake's hard enough as it is. You know, these things make it even harder. So you're just kind of waiting for those little opportunities of when the fish drift into different areas. Um, having said that, you know, it's gonna, what was that? Oh, it's bad. It's gonna be warming up you know, over the next couple of weeks. And when it does warm up, they do tend to get about a lot more um, so yeah anyway we'll sit back and hope they drift in um, at the moment I've got two out sort of fairly long range um, but what I'm gonna do is probably about eight o'clock nine o'clock I'll pull them in a bit closer so I've not got the lines going out obviously yes uh, well not obviously but you know most fish are wary of lines but I've seen them in here before in this swim actually last year I got up the tree and uh, watched a 30 pound common swim along, see my line and just absolutely bolt off. So um, yeah, I was thinking I'm better off just bringing them closer in and then uh, hopefully the fish will move in happily too. But anyway, I'll keep you posted. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna get the kettle on and uh, enjoy the rest of this gorgeous morning. Happy days. Oh, it's been a lovely day in the sunshine, soaking up some much needed vitamin D after four or five days indoors last week editing. I was looking out the window all week thinking, oh, I want to be fishing. Anyway, nothing's happened today. Um, however, there, there's been a few fish creeping closer and closer um, this way from the boy line. They haven't been st stupidly close. Um, been hanging about out a bit further, but and this is a big butt. About an hour ago, one popped up 
sort of about 60 yards out, which is the closest one I've seen. But it's quite a, a large amount of back out of the water and it looked quite straight, you know. I thought, oh, I wonder if I'm going to get me binoculars out and see if it's a common, you know. So I got my binoculars out, had a quick look, and a big old dorsal come up. And then it was flicking up, like flicking water. And that friendly common is notorious for that. So um, I'm pretty convinced it was out here again. And this is the same time last year that I saw it out in this area. And I lost one on a zig at that time, which I don't know, can't say it was it, but you just don't, never know, do you? But important thing is, it's back in the same area as it was last year. And so is Joey. <laughs> so, fingers crossed. A lot of people still think this fish is dead. And I think I'm one of the only people that's seen it in the last two years. So, um, yeah, I've, I've got to catch it. And I've got really got to just set my stall out and catch this carp. Come on, friendly. Five years. Save ya. <laughs> well, it's a very different start to the day today. Um, no mist rolling across the lake, no sunshine. Quite a cool start, really. Um, not much showing either. But about 20 past five, got up at about five, and then about 20 minutes later, half hour later, I looked out here and I saw a top section of a tail come up. Um, and then shortly afterwards, there was a bit of fizzing and a little bit of weed floating up. And it's a spot where I've definitely seen you know, quite a bit of activity in the past. I've normally put it down to tench because I have seen tench rolling over it. Um, so yeah, there's obviously a little larder, special kind of larder of some kind that they like. So um, yeah, I waited until this afternoon. Got some of hair in my eye. Yeah, I waited till this afternoon and then had a little flick around with a two ounce lead and found a little area which I think is probably right next to it. There's quite a lot of fresh weed just sort of on the top of the bar. And then it doesn't feel like it's that much of a slope, but just this side of that weed, there's a little clear area, a few little sprigs there. I'm just going to put um, a little solid bag on there and I put a bit of bait out with a bushwhacker, which is something that I'm finding more and more useful in uh, various different situations. Like for example, you know, I can spod without spodding. <laughs> cast without casting, um, even round there where I'm fishing off that left hand margin, you know, rather than spodding from here, I can just simply go round, push the pole through the reeds and bait up. You know, it's a lot less disturbance and every sort of little bit less of disturbance you can make, the better really. So uh, yeah, big edge, and although it's a pain in the ass to carry around, <laughs> it does come in very handy. morning free and I've got even less to report than I have had the last couple of days. Um, also I want to apologise for the lack of kind of transitions between night and day. There's just been no sunsets, no sunrises and where I am you don't really get to see much of them anyway. Um, and obviously I'm fishing in a pretty hairy swim so it's not the sort of place where I can go wandering off to get a nice sunset or a sunrise shot. Um, yeah, I think really I probably should have moved yesterday because I had seen a few fish out in the middle. Um, but because I'd seen that one here yesterday morning with its tail out looking like it was feeding on the bar, I so thought I've got to sit it out in case he comes back for his petty dejeuner today. But sadly, Nah, <laughs> he hasn't. But also the lake is pretty dead. Um, it's really calm, very little wind. Like I say, no sunshine, it's all grey. Pretty rubbish conditions really. Not sort of conditions that I'd choose to come up here in normally because you know it's going to be like this. Um, but I mean, there's obviously always a chance, but yeah, you know when you've got a much better chance on this lake and when they're a lot more active, you know, there's no bubbling going on. Uh, there's hardly any bream and tent showing. I've seen two carp down the boy line where they love to sit and stay. 
and then I've seen one out in the middle this morning just milling about on the surface but someone's already in that swim uh, they got here last night so yeah I missed, missed the boat on that one unfortunately and like I say because I've got such a good view from here I've not seen anything else that's worth moving on to really um, yeah don't know what to say I'm going to give it a few hours I just hope the sun comes out but I don't think it's meant to um, I've got one more night but I'm thinking I might just be kind of pissing in the wind as they say at the moment um, anyway I don't want to sound too negative <laughs> because at the end of the day I'm positive because I've seen the friendly and um, yeah obviously you know, it's nice to be out fishing but you just know when you're going to be up against it on this lake it's a tricky old water right oh Milk's boiling, that's no good. Fresh coffee o'clock. Right, well, we've had a little move up and I'm feeling much better for it. Gave it till about 10.30 over there, hadn't seen any signs whatsoever and it just felt dead. So I've moved to where I've seen the most activity um, throughout the last few days and I probably should have come around here yesterday but after seeing that tail on the bar, um, I had to give it one more night, didn't I? But yeah, really, I can't be doing all this just fishing, you know, trying to target one fish off of the group of the main fish. I mean, that friendly, although he was down there that day, he's probably been everywhere on the lake since, or certainly, you know, a good chunk of it. Um, but yeah, in my mind, I think they spend most of their time out on that boy line and then sort of in the centre of the lake, sort of around the centre area. Um, and then depending on the winds and the sun and everything else, then they might push out to different parts during the day but I think most of the time they'll return to that area at night so it makes sense to be there really um, and it was kind of my initial plan before I come on this trip so there you go hindsight and all that but I feel really confident um, I don't think there's much feeding going on at the moment and I've seen very little signs of any sort of feeding activity other than that little bit of um, fizz and the weed coming up where that fish had been feeding that morning, yesterday morning. But apart from that, you know, it was flat calm like a mill pond this morning and there was nothing going on. Like the bream, the tench are just dead. So I'm thinking, you know, your windows of opportunity are going to be pretty slim. Um, so I just don't think feel like it's worth putting much bait out at all. This, this lake is so rich, you know, they've got everything they possibly need and more. Um, so yeah, I think it's more personally, you know, this is my kind of view on this place. I shouldn't be giving all my bloody thoughts away really, should I? <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, and it's probably the same for any kind of super rich water. It's, you know, you can't really compete with that natural um, at most times of the year. So you're better off just trying to find where they are, get as close to them as you can and, um, you know, fish with a minimal amount of bait. As such, you know, I'm just fishing singles. Um, I've positioned them all on bars, I'm on four different bars out here, uh, sort of not stupidly far out, um, but yeah, out sort of where I need to be. And the fox braid that I put on 40 pound stuff is definitely helping with that. I've just put it on my spod rod as well to get myself a little bit further. I probably get, got another 10 yards or so out of that, but. I need to get myself some 13 foot rods really so I can uh, get out where I need to be when I need to be there. But aside from that, it's, it's mild, I can't grumble. It's a northerly wind but it's pretty, pretty mild to be honest with you, so it's fairly comfortable. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty buzzing for tonight. It's a shame I've only got one night left to be honest with you, but yeah, it's my birthday this weekend and I'm having a little gathering with some pals and uh, yeah. Party time! So this is my last night tonight. I mean, I could possibly do Friday, but I want to go home and have a good night's sleep before the party because we tend to be up for at least two days. Um, so yeah, I want to be fresh for that. Anyway, rabbited on enough. I apologise for that. 
Come on the cup. Come on the friendly common. Oh man. That's the prize. That's the main prize. Keep your eyes on the prize, Morgan. He's got his buzz on. We've got an absolutely cracking common, uh, probably somewhere around the 20 pound mark, but a proper old looking one. Um, definitely never caught it before. So yeah, buzzing. Absolutely chuffed to bits. Right, let's have a look at him, shall we? Sort the air out. <laughs> It'll take more than that. Wow, wow, this thing is ancient. Look at this for a mega, mega old common. <sighs> Size means nothing, 24 and a half pound. <laughs> Size means nothing, but it's 24 and a half pound. <laughs> I could have happily not weighed this one and just called it a low 20, but I had a uh, quick look on the scales and yeah. What an unreal car. I cannot believe the colour of it, <sighs> the condition. <sighs> it's just, look at that head, proper old character, isn't it? <laughs> Big old dorsal as well. Go on, mate, show us your dorsal. Come on, go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> it wants to. And then it's got them tiny little flecks in its uh, tail as well, two little pink flecks on the top lobe. So yeah, definitely. Uh, very recognisable. It's got a dent in the back there. I don't know if it got hit by a women's speedboat or something. <laughs> oh, I reckon this one could tell a few stories. I'm going to have to uh, ask Mark Boots what it's called and uh, yeah, how long it's been in here. I reckon it's been in here a blooming long time. Right, I'm going to have to get a couple of cool shots of this one because uh, well, it's rude not to, isn't it? Reminds me of. Uh, one that Tell had out of Conningbrook, I think. Uh, colours of it and that. Anyway, <laughs> right. Mega, mega, mega. Buzzing. Go on, the dorsal. Go on. <laughs> Still can't get over how cool that carp is. Proper big old pecs. Lovely colours. Ancient. Ancient Long Reach Jewel. Thank you very much. Well, it was another quiet night last night, unfortunately. Um, ducks rang in about, I guess they're doing their usual, hiding from the otters in the evening, sitting on the pathways. I guess, you know, there's a lot of uh, anglers fish along here and they're always peeing along the bank, so probably keeps the otters off the pathways and in the lake. The ducks seem to know that. <laughs> it's that time of year again as well, where I just feel so sorry for female ducks, just getting hounded constantly. I think you know I might in the future look at setting up a charity for pregnant female ducks, give them a little bit of a, a rest. <laughs> oh, I heard my first cuckoo yesterday as well actually, thinking about it. Remember the old cuckoo story from last year? Amazing birds, well, extremely lazy birds should I say. Um, but yeah, for anyone who didn't see that, a cuckoo tends to lend, uh, lay its egg in another bird's nest and the other bird thinks that it is. And the cuckoo hatches first, kicks the other eggs out of the nest and gets brought up by whatever bird it is, thinking it's its own. So, um, yeah, the life of a cuckoo. Crazy. Cuckoo. Um, very quiet out there this morning. I've not really seen... I saw one on the top earlier on. Um, but, yeah, nothing really showing. Flat calm, high pressure. 
overcast, no sunrise, no colour, just uh, a grey rise. But I'm happy because I caught that one yesterday. So, and I've got all day today. Um, so I reckon could be a chance of another one. Come on, the friendly. Make my year. God Morgan, as they say in Sweden. Um, right, so, birthday weekend has been and gone. Had a lovely time. Party around my mate's house, we had about, I don't know, 25, 30 people. And um, between me and a few friends, we uh, had the decks going for 27 hours, <laughs> non-stop. So yeah, good session of music, dancing, laughter and fun. Much needed. And yesterday, which was actually my birthday, I uh, came back to Longreach, got here in the afternoon. Speedboats were out, it was a bank holiday, so yeah, they were going nuts out here, there's quite a few of them. So I waited until they stopped, put a few spoms out. Um, Obviously, like you know, after they'd been making all that disturbance all day, I didn't, wasn't too worried about making a few casts with some spawns, and uh, yeah, just sort of about half a dozen on two rods, and three on one of the others, and then a single next door, which is only about ten yards away, by the way. Um, but yeah, nothing last night. I've uh, seen. Very little again this morning, but it's got a carpy feel to the air, you know, it's a bit cooler. No sunrise, again. <laughs> I'm missing my sunsets and sunrises at the moment with all this greyness. But a big and jumped out, just round to the left here in the swim next door. Um, I reckon it was just on the first bar. There's one bar that runs all the way along this bank, sort of about 20, 30 yards out. And it sounded massive. I mean, it, it sounded so big that it could have only been like one of three or four fish, really. So, um, yeah, flicked a little single down there, but I'm going to give it a little while, um, probably another few hours or so, and then have a little investigation in the nation, in that area, of a little lead, see if I find a nice little spot. And then, uh, yeah, might put a little bit of bait on that as well. So I don't know, I don't know why I just feel like you know, like obviously last week I was using singles, but this week it just feels like a little bit of bait is necessary. <laughs> I don't know, you just have to go by what you feel sometimes, don't you? Uh, um, yeah, I've got another three nights ahead of me and I feel like I'm in the right zone. I think with the weather we've got, this is the area I need to be in. So yes, yeah, fingers crossed, something special is going to happen. has never been a strong point of mine. Um, it's kind of sat in this little gap next door where I've got a rod and I've seen three fish show. They're about 15, 20 yards further out than I was fishing. And I'm actually fishing in a deeper gully, or was, and the fish are showing on, a, on the first bar um, in the same spot. And it's the same spot as that big and jump yesterday. So I thought it's not good enough being where I am. I need to be exactly where they are. So, oh, one's just stuck its head out a bit further out. I hope I haven't spooked him out. So, yeah, I just flicked a, a single onto that spot, pulled the old bead up the uh, leg core, and it was a bit of a soft drop, but it wasn't like weedy soft. It was more like, I don't know, maybe, well, it might have been silkweed, I suppose, but oh, it's bubbling up a bit further out now. Um, but yeah, it went bang on the money. Ideally, I wanted to cast it a little bit past it and then wind it back and drop it onto it, but um, yeah, it fell exactly where it needed to be. So, not ideal. Like I say, hopefully I've not spooked them out, but it's got a bit of chance on that one. I'll leave me waders on, so if I do get one straight in the lake, um, yeah, and it'll be a serious adrenaline buzz if I do. Come on. Please. Right, at least I've got that spot fully marked up for later now though. 
get some bait on that today and uh, yeah, hopefully they'll return in the morning, but hopefully it's still about now because I'm sure there was more than one out there. Buzz. Sun is shining, weather is sweet, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Glorious bit of sunshine. Oh, such a relief to feel and see it. Seems like so long. The birds are singing. The birds are always singing, to be fair, but I reckon they're singing today because the sun's out. Right, so I didn't get a bite off that rod this morning, but once the activity had calmed right off, I left it a good few hours or so. Got the leading rod out and had a, another little flick around the area and went a little bit further out than I was looking yesterday um, to where, you know, exactly where they were showing this morning and exactly where they were actually coming up. It's sort of weedy, a little bit of weed, you know, sort of fresh weed. But a rod length to the right of that is like a four foot by four foot, just lovely smooth area. Um, might be sand. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I reckon it is because it's either that or just real clean silt, but there's slightly firmer bits to it, you know, like right? managed to sort of clip it up on this where you get a really nice drop and the ledge just slides back. Um, and then there's weed either side of that. And it feels about 10 foot deep as well. So, sorted for tonight. I've got um, Semo Steve doing a little tackle shot run for me and I'm going to put a few little goodies out there and yeah, I think there's got to be a good chance of that going tomorrow. The spot feels mega. It's been fish show there the last two mornings. Um, yeah, buzzing for that rod. The other rods, there's not a lot been going on to be honest. A uh, little bit of fizzing on that bar that's straight in front of me. Uh, yeah, yeah, not and the odd one cruising around on the top as usual. But I think it's all going to be about this rod here. Anyway, I'm probably saying too much. I've got to try and keep things to myself a little bit. And I, these diaries are going to be too uh, up to date for my liking. <laughs> Sun's just coming up. Almost the sunrise this morning. A little bit of light on some of the clouds and a little bit of blue sky through the gaps. I mean, to be fair, like even if you could see the sun, he'd struggle to see it from this swim anyway. And I'm not going anywhere <laughs> to get any shots. Um, fully anticipating them fish turning up again this morning. I put some little bits and pieces out on that spot last night and next door and to be honest with you, I was highly expecting a bream or two. Um, I did have a plan that if I ever got breamed out in the night, I was just going to reel in and then recast at 4.30 this morning. But as it goes, I didn't have any bream, so very happy about that. Um, I've not seen anything yet, but I think it was about 6 o'clock where it appeared yesterday. So, yeah, massively hopeful that they're going to uh, reappear this morning and get their heads down on that spot again because uh, that's the best thing I've got to go at, at the moment. I haven't really seen much going on out here at all. Well, just as I said that, something rolled. <laughs> Might have been a bream though by the looks of it. now seven o'clock. I've seen no signs whatsoever over this left hand rod. The one that I had all the hope and anticipation for. I mean it's quite rare they turn up in the same spot two days in a row so I suppose I was expecting quite a lot for them to turn up three days in a row but 
I won't lie, I'm a little bit disappointed. Trouble with this lake is a lot of these swims, you don't get much of a view. Um, obviously you could be missing out on so much at this time in the morning. But I can't be leaving my rods. It's a, it's a proper hairy lake, you know, with all the features, shallow bars, um, dodgy margins and all the muscles and everything else, you know, it's not one of them places that you can really be wandering off your rods. So, um, yeah, I could be missing out on a lot. I presume, as with this is the first westerly we've had for a little while, I've probably moved down the end on, on this. But I've got to sit it out for the morning anyway, just in case, and then I'll have to make a new plan. Or I just, you know, sit it out for the last night here. This is a bit boring. A bit bored of this view, and I'm sure you lot are already as well. <laughs> but there's definitely something in this vicinity that they're obviously coming back for some sort of rich natural food source. So maybe they will come back. Maybe they're just a bit late. Maybe they're out on the bars, had a late night, and uh, yeah, a bit of a late breakfast this morning. Still hope, still hope. <laughs> Well, out of pure Joey stubbornness, I did end up doing the night last night. Um, I fished on the office bank in the middle. It's just literally a case of, well, no one's been able to sort of watch this area the last few days, um, as in no one could see it from their swims. Obviously, if people walking about, they would, but yeah, I hadn't seen anything anywhere else, so I just thought I'd give it a go up there. But sadly, woke up to nothing. Um, there was that one lone ranger swimming around on the surface again this morning and I thought right, well, I, I needed to get some gas so I popped down to the car to get some gas and the car parks right next to the meadow so I just thought oh, I'll just have a little look in this corner quickly and within 30 seconds I saw one show and then I saw another one about two minutes later so I thought well this is a little window of opportunity here that I've got to take advantage of so I went back, packed up as quickly as I could, um, got over here Wanged four rods out, two on sort of uh, shortish shigs, about four foot, and then one on a solid bag and one on a spinner with an IB. Um, the two zigs I put just out to the left, thinking that, you know, well, if the fish are going to push out, which they probably will, then hopefully they'll pass them. Um, since getting the rods out, I've not actually seen one show. Um, there was one show just before I put them out. So there's probably been about six or seven shows and I probably missed a few when I went to pack up my gear as well. Um, so there's a few fish in the area and that's what this lake's all about, in, in my opinion, for me anyway. Um, you could sit here camping bait and weight style for a very long time, but you've just got to be on them, like with most fishing really. But yeah, more so with these massive lakes. So anyway, it's probably about half six now. Uh, there's normally a, an opportunity up to sort of nine and ten o'clock if you stumble across them on this lake. Although it does seem really quiet out there. I've had them out for about 35 minutes now. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's gone a bit dead. But I'm holding on to hope. I can hear two magpies behind me. Might have to go and hunt them out to get eyes on them. Um, hopefully they'll bring me a bit of luck. Come on the brown. <laughs> And here comes the rain. Mm. 
<laughs> well, Rod's been out about an hour now, and since casting out, I've not seen one show or any signs of activity whatsoever. I mean, kind of understand it a little bit, can't you? I imagine you're out bre having breakfast somewhere nice with a few family and friends, um, you know, quite a posh restaurant, lovely delicacies, local delicacies, and then suddenly in the middle of your breakfast, <coughs> you'd be out of there too, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I think that's what they've done. But you never know, maybe they've just stopped showing, maybe they're still in the vicinity. Um, there's always a chance up till 10 o'clock in this lake. So hopefully they haven't just done one. Maybe, you know, I should have just put two out. Minimal disturbance, or maybe even one. But yeah, greedy Joe sticks four out. Maybe shot myself in the foot as a result of that. Oh, it's been a tough old week fishing, isn't it? Five nights, grueler. No birthday carp. I've been picking up rubbish that you know every other angler who's walked around this complex has walked past and obviously ignored. Um, you know, thought I might buy myself a little bit of luck, but no, the universe doesn't seem to be on my side this week. Still, it's been an enjoyable week being out and I'm always learning. So, um, yeah, there's still a chance though, there's still a chance. Keep the faith, Morgan. Come on, just keep imagining one of these ripping off. There's loads of big fish in here, quite a few 40s. The brown hasn't been out for ages. It's a mega, mega carp and quite a few of them. So, Morgan, keep believing. Don't stop believing. <laughs> please. Pretty please with a cherry on the top and icing too. And everything else that you could possibly want on your cake. I want me cake and I want to eat it. Where's my birthday cake? <laughs> Magic memories. Uh, well, there's one magic memory that happens a lot in fishing. If, if you target, you know, individual fish from a lake, you join a lake for the, you know, back in my day, I used to join St. Ives, catch the fat lady. It was 58 pound, 10 when I caught it. It was, it was, you know, it's like nearly a 20 pounder bigger than the next biggest fish in the lake. So you, 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 you're fishing that lake for that one fish and anything else that comes along, obviously, but that's your target. There is no better memory or feeling than catching that target fish. It, there's something primal, something tribal ab about it because um, having a goal and achieving a goal in whatever it is, it's, it's the reason why we like sports. It's the reason why we get behind a football team. When, when Ronaldo scores a goal in the top right corner, we cheer somebody else hitting the target. Like as humans, we're programmed to do it. It's part of evolution and I, I feel like catching a target fish, you know, and I've been fortunate to catch a few. That feeling of elation, maybe you've seen friends catch it, maybe you've seen pictures of it in magazines and you catch it yourself. There is no better magic memory or feeling than that moment. And the more you can do it, the, the better it feels and the more addictive it gets. How did I get into carp fishing? Well, I've said it a few times, like, you know, where you grow up, you become a product of where you're born and raised, don't you? And I've said it in print and said it on, on camera before, like if I'd have grown up in a council estate in fucking Glasgow, I probably would have been dead 20 years ago from heroin. You are a product of what you grow up into. Um, I was very fortunate. My parents moved out of London, North London, to uh, Harefield in Middlesex when I was a little kid, like three or four years old. And of course, I was taken out of relative, the suburbs really, into what, to a little kid was like the countryside. It still is like the countryside. It's right on the edge of London, you know. And uh, I was very fortunate in that Harefield, surrounded by gravel pits and lakes and rivers and bits of canal and stuff. And of course, like as you're a kid growing up, and back then it was very different, wasn't it? You know, you you didn't have to go home. I didn't I, I didn't go home until it was dark. I knew it, when it was dark I had to be home or I'd be in trouble. But apart from that, we had like freedom that kids just can't have these days. You know, people are too scared to let their kids.
can walk to school on their own, let alone go out. Like me and my mates, you'd go off on our bikes down to the lakes and we'd build dens and make fires and throw fucking tins of beans in them and gas canisters, and all the rubbish, silly things that boys do as a kid if you leave them unchecked. You know, how we're still here, fucking God only knows. I can remember as a kid riding my bike across Save Lake and uh, like just riding down the footpath then out onto the lake and just spinning round and round <laughs> right the way out across the cottage bay on Savo, like Peter Brock's up screaming at us from the island and stuff like that. We were fearless and my generation are different. Not only were we fearless because of the freedom we had as a kid, well of course that freedom carries on, doesn't it? So as I grew up, I can remember at eight years old, my mum and dad had sleep in bed and me climbing out the bedroom window, stashed all the kit at the bottom of the garden, like down the drain pipe, jump onto the shed, you know, all that caper, like one in the morning, my parents fucking snoring in the bedroom. And then like walking, and the, and the feeling of freedom as a kid, like when you're like, not even old enough to be out on your own in the day really, let alone at night, and then one o'clock in the two o'clock in the morning, I'm walking down the village with my seat box and on my way down to the ponds or down to Save and the other lakes, like, and the, the only person you ever see, you never see anyone. It was like being in your own world. It was just huge, you know what I mean? It's so fucking exciting as a kid. And of course, when you have an upbringing like that, you can't help but carry that on in your life, can you? And as soon as like, the fishing was brought into the equation, you know, the making dens, the fires, the staying out overnight when you said you were at your friend's house when you were 10, all the lies and the bullshit that you do as kids to get a bit more freedom. Well, we had it in abundance anyway, do you know what I mean? And of course, growing up there, very quickly it went from me and mates going on our bikes down to the local farm ponds, catching tension cruisions, like we had no aspirations beyond that, fucking, you know, a, a treat for us was a starlight. You know, if somebody had a starlight on their float, we were all well impressed and go, oh, he's got a fucking starlight there, you know? And how much of them were like a pound a pack? And that was like pie in the sky money when you're a nipper. But we spent many happy nights down that farm pond and mornings. And uh, I learnt my craft, you know, you learn you nowadays everything's at a press of a button, like no one their craft. You can go in the shop now, I could take any give me any any person off the street, I can take him in the shop, kit him out, and he'd be fishing exactly the same as we all are like everything's become a little bit blurred but back then it was very different so we started off on the farm pond we learned how to lift method fish by watching some old boy that was down there tench fishing and uh we never had any bait corn a tin of corn between us is all we could muster like 10p or so 5p when i was a kid and uh and we learned a little trick like we'd go over the farm and we'd go into the like all where where they keep all the piles of manure and that and we used to borrow the barrow from the farm and the fork and, and it would literally, you'd take one forkful and there'd be like a gallon of red worms, little tiger worms we used to call them, dendrobinas, and uh, in the big shit piles, do you know what I mean? And we'd go over there in the morning and, and literally fill a wheelbarrow up, make sure there's no farmers about, and then we'd fucking scurry off across like in the half lights of the farm pond and we'd chuck the whole fucking lot in, compost, worms and everything, and that was our baiting up. So we, we learned, even before carp fishing, like I learned the importance of preparing an area and getting stuff. Because if you went down the pond and just fished for tench, you might, might catch one or two, but you chuck a fucking bar barrow full of dendrobinas in and go back, and it was like carnage, do you know what I mean? It was like a fizzing mass, you put the float in it, it'd be fucking like this, and it would be gone. And we just had the best time. But of course, in the farm pond, there was a cut of carp. But I'm talking, I can't even remember what, year it was but we're talking late 70s early 80s so carp fishing even in the Colne Valley was happening but it was very ultra cult and the carp anglers we did come across in these like fucking canvas domes and that um, everything was matte black at the time and uh, they would never talk to you wouldn't even give you the time of day like you might as well have been invisible to them and uh, it always made us a bit sad because all right mate you caught anything and they'd either tell you to off or they'd like it very rarely would they ever give you the time of day because they were too cool they're carp anglers do you know what i mean they were much better than you you're just a kid and you're catching tents you mug go on off you go and uh, it was very much like that so we although we did venture down to kodak pit which later became known as harefield and save and all them other pits and like and you would see people fishing like in a style we weren't used to uh, but because they wouldn't interact with us, we just sort of stayed, stayed to our own little thing. So we fished at the farm pond, fished at the farm pond, and uh, we, we had seen these bigger fish, we knew they were there, but it wasn't a case of, well, we didn't know how to fish for them. It was still like, even in the tackle shop, you know, you're going, oh, there's these big ones, they're like this by the, they live by the willows and all that, and they'd be like, don't waste your time, boy, you'll never catch one of them. And this was the bloke in the tackle shop, which to me might as well have been God speaking to me, you know what I mean, no, boy, you went. So we just like, Nah, nah, matey down the shop reckons we never catch them, and, and so we didn't try. 
And uh, I remember one year there was a bloke actually there fishing for him and he'd caught one. And I saw it, when, he, when I saw it, he lifted his net out like, it was, I don't know, it was a 12 pound common or so, I don't know, 10 pound common, but it might as well have been fucking a thousand pounds, you know what I mean? We were all like, ah, everybody came round, like everyone fucking reeled in there, like I'm running around the pond and that, see this monster. And of course I was like that. <laughs> I had the same sort of feeling the first time I saw a girl in a short skirt. I didn't know why. And it was a bit similar then. I was like, I really like that, but I don't know why. And then, <laughs> and then that was the start of it, innit? Caught, tr caught tench, caught cruisers, caught tench, caught cruisers. Even caught a couple of big bream at Savo. Once we used to float fish on the canal bait, it's quite deep in the edge. And um, even though it was day ticket and we could never afford it, we went there because at the time it was really full of fish, giant pike, like, just, you know, as a kid, great fishing, and we used to fish along the canal bank where it was deep, and I can remember fishing, it was like 10 or 12 foot or whatever where we were fishing, and um, we used to catch all sorts, get an eel, and then you'd get perch, and like, and then a pike would try and eat something you were, so, you know, as a kid, it was all going on and mega exciting, but I couldn't help but keep going back to the farm pond, because it was not even a mile from my mum and dad's house, so, and of course, everywhere else in the village, I had to go down the hill and then that meant riding back up the hill later, which, you know, as a kid, you always... Um, so we, uh, we used to go to the farm pond. And anyway, I ended, up, I ended up catching one from the farm pond. I'm a f my, my, my head's a bit funny. Like I've, We've all sustained damage over the years from our mad lifestyles and, and, and I'm no different, do you know what I mean? Like I've, I've led a very hedonistic lifestyle for a long time and it definitely has fucked my memory up bad i remember the stuff i remember lots of stuff but my sequence uh, like the fun the thing that puts it all in date and time order is fucked. like so i don't know whether it's five years ago or 40 years ago but obviously when i was a little kid those memories any memories that i have got they have to be from that time because i was a kid you know what i mean so the farm pond was hazy we spent a lot of lovely times there with no aspirations happy as sand boys and and that's the thing about angling here i am all these years down the road and i've done a shit load of fishing all over the world for every fucking style of carp fishing you can imagine because i'm i'm a product of the 80s i'm an adventurous freedom fucking fighter i want to go and do all the stuff like we did as a kid do what you want when you want go here go there so my fishing has been shaped by the upbringing i had not just the upbringing i had location wise because i was brought up in the Cone valley which was like might as well have been the centre of the carp universe through the time that I was growing up. But that freedom, you know, that, that you, we could do what we want as kids, and that's lost now. So a lot of this generation and the generation, you know, they haven't had that. Their parents won't let them out of the house, won't even let them walk to school on their own these days. And, uh, and I feel that takes an awful lot out of you as you grow up and develop. Like that, that wanderlust, that fucking taste to be able to do what you want seems to have been stifled in a lot of the, ki you know, the younger anglers of today. Um, but it was very different for us. Like we were fucking, we were brave because we had our freedom and we were confident because we were going out in the night and going to all these places. And when you're confident and not scared as a kid, like, well, the world's your oyster, isn't it? So red less, there, red letter session. Uh, if there's one session that stands out, probably above any other I've had for numbers of fish, probably has to be the Essex Manor 2005. Um, my second session using Zeke's adjustable Zigs, and basically three days of complete carnage. Um, I had 16 fish at the time that I think I had five, five or six 30 pounders, um, which went on to be really big fish, some of them 50 pound. And yeah, just from, from having an idea of how to catch these fish in, in deep water, even when people were saying, oh, you know, zigs don't really work on here. Um, the first session I spent there, I saw these fish shown in, in sort of an area in front of a swim called the Pump uh, and Peg 18. And my first session down there as a member, I was in steps and I was watching these fish, like showing to my right about nearly in the middle of the lake in front of 18. And I went home that first session going, I know exactly how I'm going to catch these the next time I turn up. Um, and yeah, really the second session I, I turned up, put my zig out and before I'd even really set my gear up, I think one of them had gone. I only had one zig float at the time and, and uh, a member actually lent me a second one. So I managed to put 
two out on zigs and for the rest of the well the next because at the time it was 72 hour rule so yeah the next 72 hours were were pr pretty special you know to to catch such a head of fish in such a short period of time more than a season's worth of fish uh in in one session you know it, it was yeah it was unbelievable even now when i think back to it i can't i don't know i can't even really put it into words what what really happened that day but yeah before by the time i'd finished that session nearly everyone had zigs out and uh yeah, a lot of fish thereafter have always been caught on zigs out the manor. Right, back on the long reach mission. Got here last night. This is session number four. Um, I think last night was night number 14. And yeah, I got here kind of late afternoon. Didn't really have anything to go on. Had a good look about didn't see anything other than a couple of little signs out in the open water out here. Um, so yeah, dropped in here for the night. Haven't had anything. Got quite a few crazy liners again last night, but I don't think it's carp. You know, I think it's uh, the eel grass is coming up now. So obviously lines sitting through that. And I don't know, I think when these bars are, are active, you know, when they've got a lot of um, sort of fish feeding on them, the smaller fish, the bream, the tench, uh, the eels and all of that and the pike are kind of active as well and yeah it tends to get quite a lot of liners but sometimes you won't get any um, so it just yeah it just shows they're using certain bars at certain times so with that in mind you know maybe there are carp about but um, yeah certainly haven't had any signs of any yet I thought there might have been a chance on that rod next door um, if they were going to turn up on there this morning like they did last week but no, nothing yet so far. Um, plan, really got a proper plan for this session, um, but I know that I need to move today. Um, I think it's gonna be quite warm later on. And this time of year, I think they wanna be warm themselves, you know, so I think they're gonna find them on the back of the wind. So yeah, really down that end and then in a couple of days' time, there is an easterly, which should be the first easterly we've had for a while. It's only for a day, but I reckon there's a good chance that some fish will get on that. So I did actually trickle a little bit of bait into a little spot um, down the other end yesterday before setting up. So yeah, just priming it up. <sighs> the campaign continues. Well, as far as I know, Starburst has not been out yet and the Friendly Common definitely hasn't. So, all still to play for. Well, gave it till about midday in that swim, um, didn't see any signs, and got on missions. I decided this session that I needed to be a bit more proactive, a bit more like I used to be on here, um, you know, getting about a bit more, trickling a little bit of bait into some margin spots, um, and yeah, keeping an eye on them. So yeah, I've, I've kept myself busy, um, and I've relocated myself into the beach, which is, um, quite a cosy swim as far as long reach goes it's got a nice slope into the lake and um, yeah nice little gravel banks um, what can I tell you well got my rods out pretty happy with all of them um, got two up the left hand margin spot that I've fished quite a bit in the past and had a few from and then two a bit closer in not a lot of bait. Um, I have been trickling bait into this swim over the last month or so. I never put a lot out because um, I don't like to ruin other people's fishing. You know, I think it's, you know, it's pretty frustrating when someone fills it in before they go because these swims are all sort of pretty busy. You know, um, all the main swims get fished quite a lot, and yeah, you don't want to be turning up to a swim that's full of bait. Do you? It's sort of just 
ruining everyone else's chances. So, uh, yeah, I like to just trickle a little bit in. So I know that they're getting a bit on the spot. So I know they're getting a bit of my grub, but I know that I'm not spoiling anyone else's fishing. So yeah, I did have it in my head to get in here before um, I got here this session because there is a little, um, a little window, if you like, a um, bit of low pressure and an easterly blowing up this end, which starts tomorrow evening. So uh, I jumped the gun a little bit to get here a little bit early for that because I'm hoping that that could be a prime opportunity. Um, sometimes these things don't work out, but this time of year, you know, those little windows have to be uh, taken advantage of. So that is exactly what I'm doing. Apart from that, not a lot to report. Um, yeah, I shall keep you posted. Fingers crossed. Come on Starburst, come on the friendly. Morning. Well, nothing here last night, but a couple of things to report. Um, there was a woman come along last night and ended up getting chatting for a couple of hours, I think. And then uh, when she left, I was proper tired. Uh, I brushed my teeth and went to sleep. I woke up this morning and thought, oh, bloody hell, you didn't put your bobbins on. Because <laughs> what I was doing is I was slacking them off because it's quite deep over there, but there's a, a shallow, sharp margin here. I was kind of like letting off a couple of foot at a time, so it sinks from that end. Um, and anyway, yeah, I forgot to put my bobbins on. I woke up this morning, put them on, and then I was looking at this right hand one of these two, and I thought, why is it so slack? So I went to tighten it up a bit, and it, well, it was just slack, you know? So I picked up the rod, it was probably about 12 foot of slack, and it had got kited left a bit, um, nothing on there but it kind of even knocked the left hand rod as I've wound in, so it obviously dragged it over that, um, and the hook point was turned over. So I've literally got no idea what, what happened. The lead was still on. Um, really, really weird, to be honest with you. Probably got done, <laughs> well, pretty much, definitely got done by something, don't know what, but anyway, I can't worry about that, can I? Um, and then this morning, I was just walking along this little bush here, had a tiddle, and I saw this guy kind of like behind me swim, looking at me barra on a bike. Um, and then he carried on. And I went up to the next little hole to have a little look in the edge. Um, I come back and he's sifting through my bloody panniers on my barra. He had a, spool, a brand new spool of 12 pound contour in his hand. I was like, mate, what the f do you think you're doing? And he's like, oh, what? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. So, what do you mean, no? Like, you're obviously about to take this. And he's, oh, I can't speak English. No, boss. No, boss. And uh, Simon Kenny had his rod old stolen off his barrow along this bank the other day. So, I think we've found our culprit. Um, I wanted to punch him, you know. It's like, it made me so angry, but I'm, I'm not that kind of guy. And I thought also, he's quite a lump, you know. If I whack him, he might whack me back twice as hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I basically told him to clear off in, in other words. Um, yeah, and I'm going to message Eric now. I should have got a picture of him really, run down the path and took a picture, but I felt like smashing his bike up. <laughs> Just what a liberty, creeping around here behind people when he thinks they're asleep, like trying to steal things from them. <sighs> Unreal. Anyway, I guess you just got to think that Sad that some people are in this situation that they've got to do that. Uh, maybe I should have just given him a tenner and sent him on his way. <laughs> oh, come on, fish. I've been expecting a 10 mile an hour easterly this morning. Look at it, it's flat calm. Oh, this is turning into a proper head banger. But I'm glad it's not just me. I spoke to another guy, Matt, who's fishing here. Um, good angler, keeps himself to himself. And uh, yeah, he's, he's caught a few. But anyway, he, he was down last night as well, and he said it's, it's the same. He's just he's been, you know, walking about at four o'clock in the morning, setting up at midnight, and just yeah, struggling to find anything to go on. So just got to keep plugging away, I guess, haven't we? Come on, the full moon, good weather. Well, where's my good weather? <laughs> good weather, please, universe. <laughs> Need some wind blowing up this end, please. 
<sighs> right, more coffee, because as you can see, I'm not fully awake yet. Well, this fella was definitely not on the menu. I was just sitting there praying for a bite. Rod's gone. <sighs> Massive, great tench. I don't know if I can be bothered to weigh him, but he must be getting on for £10. He's proper chunky. Got some weight to him as well. <sighs> not the one, mate, but it's not the worst sign in the world. At least it shows the old spots rocking a bit out there. And the weather looks much better now, so um, I've still got hope for today or tonight. Fingers crossed. Fingers are always blooming crossed. <laughs> right, you smelly thing, you're going back. Look at that. I'm still not doing him justice, but I promise you he is massive. <laughs> right, back you go. Well, you have to excuse the handheld close-up action, but it's raining cats and dogs, so uh, yeah. Perched under my bivvy, but I just thought I'd do a little bit because it's like the best it's looked for ages. Um, the weather's proper CAF. Uh, the wind's trickling up here nicely. I had a tench off the spot. There was another tench just rolled out there, and although normally, you know, when I've got tench feeding on me, sort of feel like the car pain in the area, but in this lake, I don't feel like that. I feel like if you can get something reacting to your bait, there's a good chance that can signal, signal you know, um, others, or send a signal to others, or the carp certainly, to come and have a go. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. So yeah, anyway, just thought I'd let you know. Oh, feel good. I feel good. Cause you knew that I would now. But I'd feel even better if I was to catch Starburst. That's well due. Friendly common obviously that's always due. But Starburst hasn't been out since September now. It's normally one of the first to come out. Full moon tonight or tomorrow morning. So yeah, full moon with these conditions. Buzz is on. Come on, you chunks. Tell what I crapped myself and I had that tench. Oh, honestly thought it was a cup. And because I've been sitting here for 48 hours waiting for something to happen, when it did happen, oh, there was no time for the waders, that's for sure. Right, anyway, I'm going to carry on watching the water. I had to turn my phone off because that's far too much of a distraction. Um, needs to keep my eyes on the prize, in it. Jaman Rastafari signing off. Right, that was night number four, as you can see by how rough I'm looking. <laughs> Bank Tramp Morgan. Um, yeah, so it was another really quiet night. Went calm. Um, there was a full moon, but it was really cloudy, so you couldn't see the actual moon itself. And then, yeah, I think the actual full moon was about five o'clock this morning. Um, and I've been sitting here watching the water, and there was a little bit more going on than there has been the last few days. Um, I was watching some fish tearing it up out, sort of, well, quite a long way out further than I could fish, that's for sure. Um, there was a lot of weed coming up, sitting on the surface above the spot and some bubbles in amongst it. Um, there was some fish showing sort of out in the middle in front of Mutley's. Um, there was a couple on the top cruising about a bit further down and I just thought, oh, I'm in the wrong place here. You know, this is like the Royal Box. I've got the best view of the lake and I don't feel like I'm on them. So, uh, yeah, the guy came round um, and I said to him, yeah, I'm probably going to pull out of here today because I haven't had anything and I'm getting a bit bored of this view and, yeah, I need to 
and they sort my life out. And then uh, he wandered off to have a look. Out of the blue, left hand rod, <laughs> crank round. Oh, proper like aerial scrap. Uh, it's kited down to the margins, down the left, and managed to get the tip down and get it out. And anyway, we've got one. <laughs> hey, buzz. Um, I think it's one that I named Pearl about two years ago, and you'll see why when I get it out. Um, it's definitely grown a bit since then. Uh, I'm not a million percent sure, but I had a quick look and pretty sure it is. Um, so yeah, nice to meet the old girl again. She looks quite plump and full and lovely and dark. So uh, yeah, like I say, I'm not always that keen on recaptures, but when you haven't had a fish for what, eight nights or something like that, then uh, yeah, any carp is welcome. And it's really buzzed me up about the spot now as well. I feel like, you know, I've been working the area. I've been constantly going around spraying a bit of bait over the top. And yesterday there was a bit of activity there. I had the tench. Now I've had that carp, so I've got to, got to sit it out. And I, um, yeah, another big moon tonight. Looks good for today. Happy days, and I'm a new man. <laughs> Might be Pearl, I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to check my photos, but look at this. <laughs> like a little miniature version of the uh, big fully in here. Go on, girl, showing off your old dorsal. Made up with that one. Like I say, I think I've done eight nights now in total without a fish, and that was on the fourth night of this session. Trying to make the most of this period. Um, yeah, buzzing. That's certainly made up and I think this is a little sign from the lake to say don't move just yet because I was definitely going to get on my toes today but like I say I've been working that spot. Um, fish seem to be spread about a bit so yeah all good in the hood, all calm in the farm, lovely times, yeehaw. Oh, what an absolutely cracking little carp. Made up with that. Mega. That is definitely one for the future. Right then, mate. Thank you very much. Go and tell the old friend there. I've got an appointment with him. And Starburst. Both of them need to see me ASAP. Yeah, proper passive. <laughs> One man went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Oh my God, I think it is. This is a zero, is it? Yeah. It is. Right, well, I'm out by the yucca tree in my garden, so that can only mean one thing. It's the end of another show, but I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, apologies for the double helpings of diary. There's a good reason for that, and the reason is that, well, Last month I ended up the show having a little moan about May's results. Well, I'll take it all back, May. For those who follow my Instagram, you'll see that I had an absolutely ridiculous result in the last week of May. Um, those who don't follow that, well, you'll get to see that in next month's diary. But yeah, um, absolutely crazy session. I'm going to have to take my foot off the gas a little bit now as far as uh, my own obsessive fishing is concerned. It was getting a little bit out of control, you know, four or five nights a week. Life's too short and when you're doing that kind of fishing, you know, uh, it just goes by even quicker. And I'm quite a sociable person, you know, and sitting on your own five days at a time is not the most sociable life in the world, is it? So, yeah, my life balance has slipped out a little bit of sync. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've put all my energy and focus into carp angle and um, yeah, I've not even had a relationship for about three years. So it's time to restore that balance and um, yeah, up my social game. 
buy myself a little lady. <laughs> and also start being a bit healthier as well. Obviously, when you're out four or five days a week, it's not the healthiest lifestyle. Um, you're not doing any exercise other than walking around and climbing the old trees and that. So, uh, yeah, as you can all see, I'm a little bit underweight and I need to shape up a bit. So I'm going to put a bit more attention into other parts of my life and um, yeah obviously I'm still going to be producing carp angle each month I want to focus a little bit more on the filming side of things so I can improve or keep on improving that and um, yeah that's, that's probably about it for Joey's final thought other than obviously I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who contributes towards this show to keep the project going um, you are absolute saviors <laughs> superstars should i say um, whether it's you know a recurring payment massive thank you to all those who do that or you know a small small bit one off or a chunk one off you know some people just like to chuck in a year's worth you know so they haven't got to do it each month um so yeah hugely grateful to you all and obviously if you can't afford to support it i totally understand that times are hard at the moment um but even if you could just give it a little share comment in the comments below all of that helps with the algorithms and helps to get it out to more people. So, yeah. Big love, everyone. Have a fantastic month, and I'll see you in four weeks' time.